Okay, let's uh, study X13 checkpoints. You have to remember this Rodrigue's road formula of a 3D finite rotation. It is a very, very important uh, figure. And it looks complicated, but we can uh, analyze this figure. This is axis of rotation and hat is axis of rotation. If you rotate a vector, a vector that is not parallel to n hat, then we have an angle. There is a, some angle. That angle can be understood as x hat and n hat cosine theta. This is a cosine. Uh, now we, we use theta here. It should be another angle. So if it is a parallel, if x and n hat are parallel, if you rotate, x does not transform. It is an invariant. However, if there is an angle, x rotates on the rim of uh, this cone. And if you look at this figure from this direction, the opposite to the n hat, we have a two-dimensional plane that has an x-axis. This is x-axis, and this is y-axis, and z-axis is not shown here. Z-axis is actually n hat. And you will find that we decompose this, uh, this vector x prime after the rotation about the n hat by an angle of theta. And this one is invariant. It is always the same. n hat does not rotate about this axis. So original projection was a n hat dot x multiplied by this unit vector. This is invariant, rotationally invariant parallel component of an axis of rotation. And we have x in here, so x has uh, two components. Uh, this yellow component is a parallel component that, that is displayed in here. We have this, uh, this component, the blue component, that is after subtracting the x subtracted by this parallel component, yellow one. So that is a blue one. However, because we rotate about n hat, new component appears that, that is a perpendicular to this, this, and this. And this is E3, n hat is E3, and this is E1, and we have new direction E2 to make uh, this uh, three-dimensional basis vectors. And you will find, as I already told you in X13, it is a n cos x. And this is a, after rotating about angle theta, what you obtain is this one becomes a cosine and it's a perpendicular component that has a psi. You remember, one zero transforms into cosine theta and sine theta. This is the one zero is a unit vector along this blue direction that is after rotation about the z uh, a z axis that is n hat axis by an angle of theta then cosine appears and its perpendicular components has the sine component and then now it is a very simple if i take the derivative with respect to theta at angle theta equals to zero, then what you obtain is only this one because sine theta over theta, limit theta goes to zero, this is just one. So after applying the chain rule, you will find the change in position vector after a finite rotation, you will find that it 
it becomes omega cross x. That, that shows derivative of x vector is omega cross x. So that comes from uh, this component. As if, if you rotate, this component is, uh, has the cosine theta contribution that is that doesn't change a lot. But this one is uh, suddenly this perpendicular component appears. You remember when we consider uniform circular motion, you have ER and the derivative of ER has the direction of E theta with, uh, with it theta dot, and this theta dot is uh, written as omega. Okay, so it looks uh, complicated, but now we have mastered the velocity of a radial vector, arbitrary radial vector. We have n hat and x, then we rotate about this n hat with the theta dot that is called omega. Then what is the velocity of the this uh, uh, head of this, this is rotating on the long direction, this direction, and that is omega cross x. If you take the second order derivative, what you have is uh, this one multiplied by cross product of omega. Again, so double time derivative becomes omega cross omega. And we can make use of back cap rule, back cap rule, that is a cross, B cross C is B, A dot C minus C, A dot B. Applying this back cap rule, you will find that answer is a very simple. What's that? That is a simple harmonic oscillator, this uniform circular motion. It satisfies the equation for uniform, uniform circular motion. Now I have in, I introduce a special notation x perp that is x vector subtracted by this a parallel component along the n hat that is the blue direction. This blue direction, this blue direction that is this is x perp. This is x perp. X perp means lever arm. Lever arm means this is an axis of rotation. And from the axis of rotation, the perpendicular distance, perpendicular distance is called x perp. This is a perpendicular notation for identifying the perpendicular direction. So, and the direction is from the axis, and there is a right angle, and to the tip this head of the original vector x. So when we study the rotation, this perpendicular distance vector that is uh, sometimes called the lever, lever arm vector that is uh, very important because the parallel component does not contribute to the rotation. So in summary, tangential component, uh, this is, this is uh, for the, if X rotates, then it has the perpendicular component. And this uh, tangent component rotates, then it has a component uh, toward the axis of rotation. But we have another, another acceleration that is a pure acceleration that is called the uh, that is uh, tangent, tangent, centripetal acceleration is a previous one. This is a tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration is, a, for example, we have mass and the string is wound uh, around the pulley. Then you will find this accelerates. So angular velocity of this pulley accelerates. This angular acceleration is omega dot, and simply we write as alpha angular acceleration. It is similar to a, a vector to identify the simple 
linear acceleration, and this is angular acceleration. So alpha cross x, and this cross product, when we study cross product, it, we always consider perpendicular direction because this longitudinal, this parallel component does not contribute to the rotation. So simply alpha cross x is always expressed as alpha cross x perp. X perp is the perpendicular distance. X perp is the perpendicular distance vector relative to the axis of rotation. This is rotating. All right, so when you, in the previous class, when we studied the Jacobian, the length, when we consider R, radius, this is a length element. If you consider the angle with radius R, we have angle difference, then the actual distance is R multiplied by E theta something like that angle does not carry any dimension this is a pure number so angular velocity has the dimensions of not length divided by time it is just divided by time the angular frequency does not carry length dimensions in it okay And then we need to consider the rotation of an object. We remember the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, x dot squared. And something, some vector rotates about the n fixed axis n half by an, uh, by an angular frequency or angular velocity theta dot. What happens? This velocity x dot, I told you, it is always expressed as omega cross x. So omega is theta dot vector. So this one is written in here. And we can make use of the perpendicular distance. This velocity can be understood as the perpendicular distance x per and this is velocity squared and if you look at this figure on top of this figure then you will find that this is x per vector and we have angle theta so this distance is x per e theta okay so what is the velocity x per because the magnitude of x perp is the same, so x perp omega or x perp theta dot is the tangential velocity. So one half mv square, one half mv square, this v square is x perp theta dot square. Okay, this is the rotational kinetic energy. Rotational kinetic energy means uh, it does not contribute the radial direction. It contributes only the rotational motion. So tangent component can be computed with x per x uh, theta dot as a velocity. So if I consider this, I can pull this uh, theta dot out, so theta dot squared, and we have mass times x per squared mass times x perp square that is called very important moment of inertia or rotational inertia this is this behaves like the mass just like a linear linear motion mass times velocity squared in this case rotation it is always a level arm is a fixed and it is a rotating along the circle we have one half mv squared is reorganized for the tangential direction. We have m, this is x per theta dot square, and the theta dot square is pulled out. This m times x per squared is rotational inertia, 
or moment of inertia. Dimension is the length squared multiplied by the mass. Are very important. And then, because I is mx per squared, just like what we write, one half mv squared is equal to p squared over 2m by replacing mv equals a p. Here, i theta dot squared can be expressed as i theta dot squared divided by i, right? Therefore, this rotational kinetic energy can be expressed as i theta dot squared divided by 2i. And in here, L is i theta dot, that is called orbiter, orbiter, angular momentum. The reason why we used orbital is it follows an orbit. Later, in the next semester, we will learn that there is a uh, angular momentum without orbital motion that is called the spin. That we learn later, not now. The orbital angular momentum is just like moment, linear momentum is a mass times the velocity. Instead of mass, we have I. I is mx per squared. And instead of V, we have theta dot. That is orbital angular momentum. And orbital angular momentum is mx per squared theta dot. And if you look at this, this, uh, this one is actually the same as x per cross product of mx dot. Because we, we have a circle, this is x per, and this is velocity, mx dot. mx dot means m omega cross x. And m omega cross x is always the same as omega cross x per. And then we re x per, and then we take the cross product in here, and again, use a back cap rule to reproduce this expression or this or this are all the same as this one. So in short, any position vector cross product linear momentum is called angular momentum. And if you take the time derivative of this, time derivative of angular momentum, so cross product of time derivative, and plus. You know, this is a velocity, and this is a proportional to the velocity, parallel components. Any two vectors parallel, cross product is a vanishing, therefore, we have x cross this one. And what is this? Newton's law motion says the time derivative of linear momentum is a force. Therefore, we have arrived at the Newton's second law for the rotation, that is torque, torque tau, tau, just like T, so torque tau, is x cross f that is torque and that torque that torque is nothing but the time derivative of angular momentum you remember force is the time derivative of linear momentum and torque is the time derivative of angular momentum they are very very similar except that this one contains the cross product. So that's what we have derived already. Again, 
just like the case of linear momentum conservation, we can consider the sum of the orbital angular momentum constructing a system of particles. We have a bunch of particles, n particles, and we can consider the total angular momentum by summing each angular momentum of the ith particle from i runs from 1 to n. And then we expand this in terms of the each position vector can be expressed as a sum of the center of mass. There should be some center of mass that is called xcm. And there is the origin. And this, this one can be expressed as xi. But let me divide into two pieces. That is the center of mass and the relative displacement from the center of mass. That is called xi bar. This one. If I expand this cross product, we have uh, many terms. However, because the DC, DC is a constant, this is a constant, and what we find in here, this guy vanishes. This X in here, this is a constant. So if we sum this everything together, what we find is the same thing subtraction we have zero so because it is zero if i take the time derivative of this zero's time derivative is zero so it is uh, in here we have this one vanishes and this one vanishes all we have is only two contributions and these are two contributions is if i sum this one together and we have mass, total mass. Total mass multiplied by the velocity of the center of mass is the linear momentum of the whole system. So center mass cross product of total linear momentum. This is a big contribution, but this one vanishes at the center of mass frame. So usually we we, by choosing the center of mass frame, this one disappears, and the only contribution survives is this at the CM frame. In, uh, in addition, uh, just like what we have done with the linear momentum cons uh, conservation by considering the Newton's law motion for the action and reaction, the third law, we, at the time, we made use of the fact that the two objects interact each other, I to J and J to I. If I sum these internal forces, it became zero. That was used for the linear momentum conservation. However, in here, we have to use the fact that the force is a central. That means the force is a central means I and J interaction is a proportional to parallel to XI and XJ. If I make use of, the, you have to, you have to study X13. X13, I have explained in detail. This is called the center force constraint, then internal torque also cancels. If it is a central, internal force is a central, then internal torque vanishes exactly. As a result, only the sum of the net force is just external torque. External torque is the contribution of the torque due to the external force. And any internal torque does not contribute to the whole system. This is, if we do not have any external contribution, this is zero. If it is the case, the total linear momentum must be conserved in any case. 
internal torque that is due to a central force always vanishing. They, they vanishes exactly. And if there is no external torque on a system of particles, then the total the angular momentum is always conserved. Just like what we have done with the linear momentum, with the work kinetic energy theorem, you remember how one half mv squared final subtracted by initial kinetic energy. That, that was work. And what was the work? What was the work? F dot dx. Then you will find the change in the kinetic energy. That is the linear version of the work kinetic energy theorem. What I need to do is replace this force with torque, replace this uh, displacement dx by angle d theta because it is a rotation. So here, it just like f dot dx, it is just like m a dot dx is I theta, double theta, that this is, R, this is alpha. This is alpha. Alpha is omega is a time derivative. Omega is time derivative. Anyway, this is called work kinetic energy theorem for the rotational version. So if I apply any torque and we make uh, some rotation, then the angular velocity of a rotating system increases and that results in the kinetic energy change. And next part will be the evaluation of evaluation of rotational inertia. It is uh, the reason why we have studied the uh, uh, Jacobian too many times is uh, to evaluate the, these kind of integrals. You you must be familiar with the dx to dy dz volume integral or dr r d theta for the spherical polar coordinate in two dimensions or dr r squared d cosine theta minus one to one d phi zero to two pi for the spherical polar coordinates in three dimensions because the rotational inertia is consists of the elements and each element of rotational inertia must be mass multiplied by x perp square. x perp is the perpendicular distance, x perp perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation. You need to find the mass of a differential element, and this mass should be expressed in terms of density multiplied by volume, or this volume, or this kind of volume. And the density can be obtained by using the geometry of the object that is called the rigid body. Okay, so once mass and the geometry of the object is known, for example, this is disk. We have a disk area is a pi r squared. We have mass m is distributed uniformly. The rho should be m over pi r squared, something like that. And using this, mass element should be rho times dx times dy or because it is a disk we had better use this rho times dr r d theta something like that so you you need to evaluate express the mass element in a differential form and then you need to write down the 
perpendicular distance uh, that is a level arm vector square. And in, you need to integrate, you need to carry out this integrate, integral. So the reason why we have carried out so many integrals is to evaluate this kind of integral that we, we must evaluate. So please remember, you have to, in the exam, there are many integrals up here. And all of them can be done just following the, these, these trivial integrals. Once the, the most important and the difficult part is the, how to analyze the volume or surface element, but we mastered until now. If you have not, then you have to do that. You have to do that. So repeat, just follow these integrals. Every, every calculation, every detail of calculation is given so what you need to do is uh, just to train yourself. The evaluation of integral is uh, very important to find out the exact value for the rotational inertia. So this is a complete set of integrals that, that appear. So I hope you train a lot. That's it for today.